Hello, this is Dining Table Print and Play. Today I'm going to make myself a double layered board for Maki. This is the board we're going to be creating, and hopefully it doesn't stand out too much, but the turn tracks down the left, the morale and soldier tracks on the card to the right, and three other locations on the map are recessed by way of a double layer of cardboard with cutouts. Like this, your tracker cubes aren't going to fall around all over the place if the table gets knocked. Things all line up nicely all the time and so on. You may have seen this system in games like Scythe or Great Western Trail. Anyway, in case you're unaware, this is Maki, a solo worker placement game I designed and released as a print and play a few years back, in which the player takes the role of the French resistance in the Second World War, fulfills missions on a tight deadline to bring down the Nazi occupation room within. One of the reasons I'm making this video is that Maki is on track to be my first published game design. As of the upload of this video, it's in the last few days of a Kickstarter campaign with Sideroom Games to fund a production run. If you'd like a commercially produced copy, which, thanks to the success of the campaign, will have fancy recessed board areas, then please do back the campaign on Kickstarter. Importantly though, if that's not your thing, the print and play files will remain available. It's in the contract, so you can always build yourself a copy at home. Now, this isn't going to be a strict tutorial, but I'll describe what's going on at each step and why I'm doing things the way I am, so hopefully if you plan to double layer some boards, it'll be helpful. First things first though, always start with a clean, sharp blade. I've started using these titanium coated blades in my rotary cutter. They're a little bit more expensive, but they seem to hold a sharp edge significantly longer than the regular ones, so it's worth it. Plus, they're a nice gold colour. Well. Strictly, they're a nice titanium nitride colour, whatever. First of all, we'll do the tracker card. Note that I've got the graphics for the card printed twice. One is the top layer, and that's got everything on, and the other is the bottom layer. I removed some unnecessary bits from this and extended the colour fills a bit, in case the alignment isn't perfect. Crucially, the crop marks are on both layers, so I can use two sides to align the layers. We'll stick the top layer to some card, 1mm grey board, and cut it out roughly, leaving a bit around the edge. I'm stabbing through the corner of each recess with an awl. This leaves a hole, and when I'm cutting with a knife later I'll be able to feel when the blade reaches this hole and stop the cut. I cut out from the corners on each side of each recess, using the ruler to make sure all the recesses are aligned properly. Then I go back and nip out by hand the corners I didn't cut all the way through previously. By now I can pop bits out, or at least note which corners are still hanging on and cut them again. I make a shallow cut on each edge so I don't lose the position of the cut, and then cut off two sides that I can use for alignment. Double check the fit against the lower layer, and it's time to glue. I'm using mounting film for this. It's like giant double-sided tape without the tape. You stick your thing down to the sticky side, then peel back the backing and reveal the glue to stick your thing to something else. The only catch here is that I have to weed the extra bits of glue out from the cutouts I've already made, because otherwise they'll stick to anything and everything. In retrospect, I should have stuck the film down before making the recessed cuts. Once the mounting film is cleaned up, I can carefully use the two cut edges to align the layers and stick one down to the other. I've edited the spare room tiles from the recent print and play files to have the standard nameplates, so they fit nicely in the recessed board areas. I cut the majority of the circle with a compass cutter. Then trim the rest of the shape out by hand, using downward chiselling cuts rather than long slices for the most part. The board is done in the same way as the tracker card. Starting with the upper layer, I first try cutting a bit of scrap paper to make sure I have an appropriate radius set on the compass cutter. Then I cut out the whole circle of the spare room location. Then go back and use a ruler to slice out the area for the nameplate. 
Sliding the lower layer under to double check, it seems the size of the recess is appropriate, so I'll go back and cut the others as well. Just as with the tracker card, I'm coming part way through on all sides so I don't lose my crop marks before trimming two of the sides of the top board layer that I can use for alignment. I'm using mounting film again for this join. The advantages of mounting film here are that it sticks instantly so I don't have to wait around for glue to dry, and it's not water based like PVA glue so it doesn't warp the cardboard in the same way PVA would. Finally, once the board is carefully positioned and stuck to the bottom layer, noting that this time I only bothered to print the areas that were going to be visible through the holes from the top layer, I can do a final trim all the way around the board to finish it off. Anyway, a few of you have asked how I'm doing, whether dining table print and play is still alive and so on. Well, halfway through last year my partner gave birth to our first child and it turns out that between nappies and playing and bouncing him to sleep and so on there's not been any time to do videos. Not to mention that he's been crawling around the floor at speed since he was five or six months old and is starting to walk on his own now so I don't get many opportunities to get the filming equipment out. A dining table print and play video pretty much takes over the whole of the dining room with lights and camera tripods and trailing power cables and everything. It's just not feasible when there's a nine month old child pulling himself up on everything and putting everything else in his mouth. I do definitely intend to keep making videos, in fact I have a couple more videos worth of footage already shot that just needs editing together, but I expect that the gaps from one video to the next will necessarily be longer, at least for the immediate future. And of course, the other thing that's taken some of my time recently is discussions with Sideroom Games over the publication of Mackie. If you're interested and you see this video before Monday the 6th of May, then please go and visit the Kickstarter project, take a look. Other than that, see you next time whenever that is.